Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Resident Evil Remake. This is episode 2. So last time we were once again pursued into the Spencer Mansion by undead dogs, or undead looking dogs. And then we made our way through with the help of Barry, got the shotgun, and learned about what happens when you kill zombies, which is they get back up. So we got the kerosene, or at least we got the flask to fill with kerosene, but we don't have a lighter yet, so we'll need to get that. And we can get rid of these ink ribbons. So we have the sword key, which means there are more sword doors to be opened. Hmm. So we're going to want to get the lighter ASAP, because without that, we can't permanently get rid of zombies, unless we get lucky with a headshot, or kill them with the shotgun, like we did the fellow who was standing out here. So, if we try to go back out the way we came, we get this message. The doorknob looks like it's ready to fall apart. Go through anyway. What this means is we can only go through this door one more time from this side before it becomes a one-way door. So we're going to try to avoid going that way as much as we can, since there is a point later on where we're going to want to go through there. So we didn't go upstairs yet, and as you can hear, there is at least a zombie up here. Yeah, okay, gotta remember the controls just to be certain, because last time I got hit at least once, not remembering them. So, left trigger to aim, right trigger to fire, and left bumper to use the defense item. Okay, got one guy here. I think we're gonna want to kill him. Unfortunately, there is another one. I didn't mention it last time, but I love how meaty the bullet impacts sound in this compared to the original game, which didn't really have an actual hit sound. Oh, Jill, please. Wow. Okay, that was the one we were shooting at first. Ooh. Is he dead? No, he's not dead yet. Damn. Come on, you fucker. Ooh, okay, that was a critical headshot. I was trying to get him to die on top of the other zombie, because you can actually burn both of them with one use of fuel if they're stacked on top of each other. But since he's head popped, it doesn't matter. All right, now how do I reload without firing? Because that was something they added to this port. And how are we doing on ammo? Eh, not great, but, you know. This is one of the safe room areas, so we did need to clear it out. And we don't have to worry about them reanimating for a little while. We have some time before things get bad. Alright, gonna need this to heal. An unlit fireplace. Well, we can't light that without a lighter. And you can see there's kind of a map on the wall there. So this door is locked with an emblem of a helmet. We won't be going through there for a bit. Picture of a partly built mansion. It looks an awful lot like the one you're in now. It's kind of weird that there are just a bunch of pictures of the mansion itself inside the mansion. Alright, so we really did get kind of lucky because we only have one zombie that we need to burn out of this place. Okay, this one's locked with an emblem of armor. So, I think we've done everything we can do. In the original game, it was this door here that had the broken door handle, which is a little pointless, because you never really needed to go back through this door after the first time. And now there's just no... No doorknob at all. But we'll see in a moment why there's not really much point in going in there from that side. Oh, shit. I did not remember if there was a guy here. Wow. Alright, move, because he can swing around quickly. Okay, he's down for the count. We'll grab this piece of wood. And then we'll go back through this door. So that hallway we were just in... That's going to be kind of our safe corridor for most of the game. Obviously, it's not right now. We're going to have to clear it out, but it will be. 
because it's the best way to get from the middle of the mansion to the safe room on this side. A dog whistle. A crumpled memo. Today, Sir Spencer told me to hide something where no one could find it. Well, I had this idea. I figured if I could somehow have it protected by a dangerous animal like the vicious canine that lives here, no one would be able to get near it. As far as I can tell, the mud is always hanging around the second floor balcony on the west side of the terrace, and he ought to come running at the sound of a dog whistle. This is where you come in. Thing is, I reckon you're the only person that can get near that damn dog without risking a serious mauling. Which means only you can put this collar on him. The object that Sir Spencer wants hidden is concealed inside. You're the only person I can trust with this. Of course, you'll get something out of it as well. Remember that certain item that you've always wanted to get hold of? Well, in exchange for your services, I just might be able to get it for you. This could work out well for both of us, John Pullman. Alright, so there's a dog that has something we want. And it can be summoned with a dog whistle. Alright, another magazine. Definitely need those as much as we can find. Those notes back there look like they're readable, but they're really not. A chessboard carved from ivory. The game appears to have ended in a checkmate. An old-fashioned gramophone. The record is Jupiter. There's also like a really tiny jukebox next to it, or just, I guess, a radio. An open journal. The pages are blank. Botany. Uses of medicinal herbs. It is a well-known fact that there exist many plants that are credited with medicinal healing powers. Since ancient times, mankind has been healing wounds and diseases using various plants. In this book, we will sample three herbs that are a native of the Arclay Mountains and briefly outline each of their medicinal qualities. Each herb has a distinct color and a distinct medicinal quality. The green herb recovers physical strength. The blue herb neutralizes natural toxins. However, the red herb has no real effect by itself. We have found that mixing green and red herbs results in a magnified effect. We will outline the effects of red herbs when mixed with other herbs when we have more data. Meanwhile, feel free to experiment on your own, for true knowledge is only acquired through experience. Just mix up these plants and eat them and see if anything happens. And if it kills you, well, too bad. Alright, we got the lighter. I appreciate that even in this remake, it still just says lighter of lighter on it. Words are carved on it. Don't play with fire. Love, Jessica. Hmm, Jessica, eh? Alright, we're just gonna use this green herb. That should get us back to fine. Okay, so now we've got some stuff. We've got the lighter. Thankfully, it, it is fueled, so we don't have to refuel it. But now we can use that to incinerate these zombies. Which is essential for creating safe zones. So let's get down here and do some inventory management. All right. So we're going to have to keep the sword key. The dog whistle, I'm trying to think if I should get rid of this yet. I know where to use it, and we could go use it now, but there's a couple other things I want to do first. We'll put that away for the moment. We'll take the fuel canteen, and we will take the shotgun. Now, it is also easier for Chris, actually, to deal with the zombies, because he already has a lighter in his personal item slot. However, since he also has two less inventory slots, that just makes it not nearly as much of a pain in the ass as it would be if he had to take up two of those with the combo. Alright. So we dump some fuel on this guy, and back up or you will actually injure yourself. So now we know he will not ever get up. He's actually not going to be there next time we come in here. Doesn't really look neutralized, but believe me, he is. Alright, so now we have the lighter. On my original playthrough, I never figured out what this item was for. 
I just had it in my item box the whole game, and I never really figured out what it was for. Because I hadn't played the original game, and thus I didn't know that there was a map in this room. There's a paper attached on the inside, nothing is written on it. What you're supposed to do is you stick this thing on the picture there. And then, because it's like a metal plate attached to the chimney, it burns the image of the map into the paper. Alright, so now we have the map of the second floor, which means we can see where we're missing items. And now that we've got the map, that room has turned white. So there's nothing else we can do here. Okay, so that's one less item in our inventory. Which means I actually probably should have kept the dog whistle. <sighs> well. Let's go out here first. Now, I'm not going to conserve the ammunition we have in the shotgun right now too much, and there will be a reason for that. So trust me that I'm not just being wasteful with it. Alright, so he's neutralized as well, and now we're out of kerosene. And that saves us the trip of having to go get more kerosene. <laughs> Locked, emblem of armor. Locked, emblem of armor. Alright, so now this corridor is also clear. Which means we can now use it to get between the main hall and the save room on the east wing. Barry. Jill. Any good news? Other than I'm still alive in this madhouse? No. Can't say it's much safer here either. We'd better secure our escape route first. There's gotta be a back door somewhere. Alright then, let's split up again. Hey, hold on a sec. Look what I've found. What? A can of fizz. It's sure to yellow and mellow those things. It's yours. Hopefully you won't have to use it. That's not any less weird of a dialogue in this game than it was in the original. What about you? Oh, don't worry. I like the buddy system we have here. I have I this. See. Thanks. I'll take it. See you later. Ciao. But without having any idea if you have a grenade launcher or anything, he just hands her a pile of shells and he's like, yeah, use these. Emblem of armor. Oil painting in a large frame. Paint is dried and cracked. And also, I forgot about that, so now we have the taking up one of our slots. Acid rounds are the best, most damaging type of grenade launcher ammo. So, that is helpful. It's just weird that they give them to you this early in the game. Locked from the other side. Alright, I don't remember the situation of the room above the other save room. I think we cleared it out, because I'm pretty sure we went to the other save room. But now I don't remember. Well, according to the map, we did not go to the other save room yet. Because there's one in both wings of the house. Actually, we haven't even been to the second floor of the dining hall yet. Well, I guess we'll have to clear a path. I was going to just go back and get the dog whistle, but... We would still need to fight our way through, so we might as well do that first. Alright. How many zombies do we got up here? Oh, hello! <laughs> I really thought he grabbed me there. I was, like, getting ready to press the button, but no, he missed. Okay, well, if there's only one, then I'm not gonna kill him, but if there is two, we're gonna get rid of one. Because it differs from version to version. I think in Deadly Silence, there was two zombies in here. Yeah, okay, so there's only one, which means we can always kind of give him the runaround. He's still trying to catch up to me. He's still on lap one. Okay. 
Come on, Jill. Just give it a shove. All right. Random vandalism complete. Okay, so hopefully this zombie doesn't turn around before I get to the door. We did go up here. Right? We went up here to get the arrowhead, which is in that hallway on the other side of that locked door. But we didn't go into the other hallway. Which is because we needed the sword key, right? Yeah, locked from the other side. I didn't get a chance to open that because the zombies cornered me. Alright. So, what's the situation in here? Open that door. Okay, looks like there's no zombie over... Oh, nah, there he is. I was gonna say, no zombie over here, but he was just down the stairs. So we got two of them. I can wait. You can just find your way over here. So there's one more, and he's kind of down the hall. I could probably get him to die on top of this zombie. Just that meat explosion in my right ear as he gets closer. Oh, don't be a little bitch and die over there. I've got to get over here before he gets up. There we go. Is he dead? He's dead. We got the two stack. I think that's close enough that they'll both burn. Alright. So, this door is locked. Emblem of a helmet. And this door was just locked from the other side, which, if we look at the map here, leads back into the other hallway. So now we have a shortcut between those. So, we're gonna need some more kerosene, right? Yeah, because I used my second one on the hallway. We'll need to find more of that before we can secure this zone. There's a zombie right here, isn't there? No? Oh, there's a not-alive zombie here. <laughs> I don't remember there being any instances of zombies grabbing your feet in this, unlike the original when they're on the ground. You know, they could grab your feet. Shelf is full of pills and elixirs you've never seen. Many of them have changed colors. If she's never seen them, how does she know they've changed colors? There are several kinds of serum here. Many of them are of a sickly color. A well-used bed. Typewriter. I thought there was an ink ribbon on the table. But yeah, I guess there's nothing in here. There's also no kerosene in here, unlike the other save room. Alright, I'm not going to worry about sorting my inventory just yet. Have that dog whistle. Um, I guess that's all we need. I used up all my handgun ammo. Okay, yeah, take it slow, because I don't remember exactly where these zombies are, if there are any else in this hallway. I think there's one near the end. Painting of the mansion, illuminated by a bolt of lightning. See what I mean about the pictures of the mansion here? Alright, looks like we're clear. Alright, so here we have the broken shotgun which we could have used to avoid triggering the shotgun trap, but since we're Jill, we don't need it, because we got rescued by Barry, so we can just leave that there. This room will forever say that we have not completed it. Just some old furniture. But also, a stun walker, a shockwave in... I can't read that, it's too small. So that's one battery for the taser, and the taser is better than the dagger because it will actually stun an enemy for a while after you shake him off. But that's really the only difference. Alright, ink ribbon. I thought there was a handgun magazine in here as well. 
or maybe some shotgun ammo, but I think that's only on easy. There is, however, kerosene here. I don't remember how many refills you get out of this. I think it's six, or not six refills, but, you know, six units that you can take out of it, because you can also refill it if you only have one. But that also might be set by difficulty. I guess we'll find out. Alright, well, let's get rid of this guy camping the door. And let's see if we can find a nice spot to burn both of these guys. That's what I like to see. Two toasty zombies. Alright, so now this hallway is pretty much safe for the moment. We won't have to worry about any resurrections. Okay, that's emblem of an armor. So the armor key, as we can see, is used for a lot of doors. But we need to get rid of this sword key first, just so I don't have to keep carrying it around. Alright, so let's top up our kerosene again. About half. Okay, yeah, so you can only refill it with four charges. That means this should be empty now. And that's why I said we won't have enough kerosene to kill all of the zombies, because I think there are four refill spots throughout the mansion, and they all have about the same amount in them. Okay, so what's my inventory situation? Ink ribbons we want to get rid of. Because those are just a waste of space. But we might actually want to do a mid-episode save right now, just so I don't get cocky and lose all my progress. So let's do that. I'm a little touchy about that because in the Chris playthrough, towards the end, there was a couple sections I had to repeat, you know, big chunks of an episode because I got cocky and died. Especially towards the end of the game. And that'll probably happen in this playthrough as well because, you know, Jill is more fragile than Chris. So I'm not exactly sure how many hits she can take from certain enemies. All right. Let's go make use of our dog whistle. This is another new area that wasn't in the original. It's kind of a, a balcony. As well as this green herb planter. For some reason, we can't just take these. She refuses to uproot them, so you can only use them by coming here. Still, it's essentially free healing that doesn't take up inventory space. And let's unlock this door over here. Which leads back into the main hall. Alright, so here's the area from the photo. It's a different perspective. In fact, I don't think you can see this perspective exactly from the photo. But yeah, this is the terrace, so let's use our dog whistle. Which doesn't make a noise, of course, because we can't hear it. And we're going to take out the shotgun, because, you know, vicious dog. We killed one, but there is actually two drawn in by the dog whistle. Oh, knife kill. Some kind of thorny plant you've never seen before. No, that's a dog, Jill. So yeah, there were two of them. The big one takes quite a few shots, which is why I brought the shotgun. The other one obviously didn't take so much. All right, so we got the collar. Now we need the hidden item they mentioned. There's a switch. Will you press it? 
And we got a dog coin. Which has an armor symbol on it. And deploys into the shape of a key. But it is not actually a key, it's only an imitation. Shaped like a key, but lacks the rigidity to be used as one. So, that's not gonna get us through any doors. Did I get hit? No. Because we used one of our daggers. How many daggers do I have? Three. Alright, I'm actually feeling pretty good right now. I thought I was going to take at least one or two hits there. Which means we don't even need to use the herbs. Probably don't need this dog whistle anymore. Discard. Okay. So now we have an imitation key, but we need to find a way to exchange that for a real key. We're going to go back into this hallway. This is another section that is new to the remake, is how you get the armor key. Hey, remember this guy here? This uh, red corpse that's been sitting here since we first got here, the one that has big long fingernails? You might think, oh, well, I'll just use a fuel canteen so this thing doesn't get up. Uh, that doesn't work. If you use the fuel canteen, it will get up, because it's this one is scripted to always resurrect. We're not going to worry about that right now. There's an inscription on the shield. Death is only the beginning. Because then you come back as a zombie. There's an inscription on the shield. Death is the true essence of bliss. I mean, those zombies do sound pretty happy. Oh. Like a drunk who's lost a bet. So we have a key here. There's an inscription on the shield. Death is everything. You really like death here. This is a very death-heavy design. It's locked. An emblem of a helmet is carved into the lock. So as you might surmise, this is not as simple as just taking the key. May whoever takes this emblem find peace in death. So we take the mansion key. Which activates this knight statue with a big fucking spinning blade. So this trap is not as bad as some of the other ones because you can just stick the key you took back in. But since we have the imitation of a key, we can do the old switcheroo. And even the spinning blade knight resets to his position. Alright, so as you might surmise, this is the armor key. which opens up a lot more of the mansion for us. Now we need to worry about that red zombie. Especially because he's not here anymore, he's somewhere else. I don't want to be caught by surprise by one of those, because they will tear you apart. There's a regular zombie around the corner. You're not really who I'm looking for. Lucky with the stagger there. Alright, I don't think he's done just yet. So let's execute him. Okay, where is our sleeping beauty? Oh boy, there he is. Motherfucker. Yeah, so this is a crimson head. They're real nasty. And they were put in as a big surprise for returning players from the original. Because suddenly. You had to be careful about what zombies you kill, otherwise they come back as real horrible zombies that will fuck you up. You can see, he only hit me twice and I'm in red caution. Alright, what's our play at this point? We're going to want to go back to a safe room. In fact, I would like to just make use of those green herbs. Those, you know, ones outside. So let's head back to the main hall. Also, there are crows in this room now. 
I'm not really sure why. They don't do anything. Unless you shoot them. I didn't get a chance to toast that guy that I shot either. Okay, so there's still a zombie in here. It's all the way at the end of the hall. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I can take him out in eight bullets. I mean, he's pretty far away. I don't want to waste my one shotgun shot on him. But at the same time, we kind of need this corridor to be free, because we need to get down over there where he is. So maybe it's better to try to pop his head with one shot. I can be a little bolder when I have defense items, because I know that, you know, even if I'm low health, I can save myself from insta-dying. Zombie! Hello? Hello? H hello Fuck it. So I missed his head, but I think I took one of his arms off. That sucks. That's a that's a waste. I like how they do like the limpest, you know, crowd dive when they fall over like that. So that's an armored door, but I want to go over here so we can get rid of the sword key. I think this is the last sword door down here. There we go. No further use for this key, so we throw that away. So this area is not new, but you actually didn't come here until way later in the game in the original. This is the kitchen. Another place where it's very grimy. A bunch of spices you've never seen before. Uh, it looks like a bunch of pots, but I think the spices are up there. Above Jill's head. There's also a door here. It's locked from the other side. A piece of meat from an unidentified source. Another safety dagger. Crumpled body and an elevator with no power. Dishes are crawling with maggots. Clearly this kitchen was abandoned in a bit of a hurry. There's something else in here? Nope, just a dagger. So this cutscene was in the original as well. You know, you try to leave and a zombie comes down the stairs. However, in the original, it seemed much less effective because it happened way later in the game when there were things worse than zombies wandering the halls. And you're like, all right, one zombie. And we don't even have to shoot him. We'll just uh, leave him here with the meat. So we opened up this room, and hey, what do we got here? There's something written in the corner of the picture. Commemorating the completion of the mansion. Yep, it's another photo of the mansion. <laughs> they really want you to know where you are at all times. A wooden counter made of oak. It gives off a pleasant aroma, like fine wine. That could also be, you know, the wine sitting up there. So we got a piano here. An expensive looking grand piano. What am I stuck on? Ugh. Stuck on the shelf. So we can obviously push this shelf because it's not part of the pre rendered background. And back here we get the Moonlight Sonata. 
if it says so Nate on it. A section of the music is missing, leaving only the beginning and the end of the music. So, we won't be able to use this to play the Moonlight Sonata until we find the missing pages. Nope. No, I didn't actually want to search that again. <laughs> Jill, please. I know you really want to see this picture, but let's go. Alright. So... Can't go through this door, because we got to unlock it from the other side. Which we can do now that we have the armor key, but we're going to have to do a bit of a loop around. And while we're here... Grab this gem. The reason for our earlier vandalism. So let's see, we're going to wrap up shortly. But of course, that means to do that, we're going to have to go back to one of the safe rooms. And I think we're going to go to the west one again. Can I open this with the armor key? The number of times I've played this game, I still don't remember which doors are which. We're also going to have to go back through this section again, because there's actually an area I should have gone that I forgot to last time. We unlocked the door, and then I never actually went through it. Alright, so let's unlock that door. Nope, don't actually need to go down there. Even out here, the lighting's really good. Like, for an old game that uses pre-rendered backgrounds- Oh, there's a zombie out here now, I didn't remember seeing that. Oh boy. I'm not wasting any bullets on him, though. That caught me by surprise. But I was gonna say that, for an old game with pre-rendered backgrounds, the lighting in this is really good. Like, that was one of the definite, noticeable improvements. And I don't think they changed much of that in this port, so that's all. Mostly the original game. Alright. We really don't even have the ammo to kill this guy either, so we just have to let him be. I mean, this is fine. I had to go around that zombie, but... We had to go to the safe room either way, so not really a big deal if I have to cut him off. Oh, you son of a bitch. He's going to come through either way. They really don't want me to have that easy healing. Thankfully, he's not actually there. <laughs> Okay, so that puts it back to full health. And now we can go through this door that he's apparently rattling on. This one was a helmet, right? Yeah. And there he is. It's alright though. It's gonna take him a long time to find his way down these stairs, if he can at all. Okay, so we're going to wrap up in this save room, but first I'm going to open this door over here. Also, I think that zombie might despawn, because he doesn't belong there. Okay, no zombies in sight. Another battery pack. I'll take this very slow. I think there might be a zombie in this room. Check your corners, Jill. No? No zombie here. Alright, well, let's unlock this door. So that'll lead us back into the hallway we were just in with the piano room.
There's an inscription here. A tiger glowing with blue and yellow light. So in the original game, it said blue and red, but now it says blue and yellow. Another little change that's meant to catch you off guard, since there is still a red gem, but you don't want to put it in here. And that'll net us some shotgun ammo. I may actually want to use this shotgun ammo. I know I said I was gonna kind of empty it out, but I don't think we're ready for not using the shotgun, especially since there are some folks scratching on the windows over here. You can see hands on the glass out there. I like that you can even see their shadow. That's a good creepy effect. Alright, so... We'll deal with the rest of this next time. There's another room at the end of that hall. We're not quite ready for it yet. I don't, okay, the zombie didn't despawn. I'm not sure where he is now. Sounds like he's still upstairs. That'll also be a problem for next time. Okay. So we can deposit our music sheet and keep the key, keep the fuel canteen and the lighter. Yeah, I think we can hold on to all this stuff for now. All right, so that'll do it for episode two of Let's Play Resident Evil Remake. And I think we made some pretty good progress that time. We got another key. We got the lighter. So now we can take care of these zombies so they don't come back as nasty crimson heads. So I think we call that one a win. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Until then, take care, folks.